Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to a Christmas special of Teen Meets World. I'm Danny Owens, your co-host, and this is my dad slash other co-host, Martin Owens. Hi, Danny. Hi, everyone. Safe for this one. Yeah, it is. Very exciting, yeah. because we're getting close to Christmas now. Ooh, episode 10. Yes, and we're going to talk with some more Christmas stuff, along with, uh, complete with a Christmas quiz. Ah, yeah. You're doing a Christmas quiz at the end, aren't you? Yes. So everyone, are you, so what are you going to do? Are you going to leave like a little gap so everyone can think of the answers, write down or whatever, and I suppose they could just put comments, couldn't they, their answers? Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're if you did if you did hear dad folks, please if you need to uh think get the questions I mean right, then write down the answers down below. Yeah, just so at the end of this episode we're gonna do a quiz. So if you want to get a pen and paper, or you should listen back and just put it in the comments. Good. R yes. So right. Let's start off with the Christmas films. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we're only going to do a few, aren't we, this year? Yeah. Select few. And you know what? I can't believe this first one, that we never did this before. Yes. What is it, Danny? Gremlins. <sighs> yes. Love that. Yeah, this was back in 1984, this uh, film was made. Ooh. Who's in that, then? What's the guy's name? First up, we have Zach Galligan, who plays the main character of Billy Peltzer. Yeah. Phoebe Cates plays plays Kate uh, Br Beringer, Bringer, if that if, if I'm pronouncing her name. She's the love and dress of Billy. Then we have Hoyt Axton playing Randall, Billy's dad, and Lynn, Billy's mom, is played by Frances Lee McCain. Then we have Glenn Turman and Jackie Joseph playing Mr. and Mrs. Futterman, the next door neighbours. And then we have the sweet little little creature, Gizmo, who is voiced by Howie Mandel, who was also in Muppet Babies that we mentioned back in our last episode. Ah, uh, yeah, he's just the, the voice. Yeah, of Baby Animal, Baby Skeeter, and Baby Bunton for the first season, that is. Ah, Howie nice. would. Howie is also the voice of Bobby in Bobby's World. Yeah. Well, we talked about him a couple of episodes ago, didn't we? Yeah. Do you know who you've missed out? Well, I think you've missed out. What is it? A famous child actor. Who's also in that film. Who he is? Um, I don't know. Corey Feldman? Oh, yes. You know, from Goonies. He's oh. not a f God, he's in loads of things anyway. Lost Boys. Oh, yeah, I can that, but yeah, he's, he's a no. Uh -huh. yes. So, what did you reckon to Gremlins? It was absolutely good. Absolutely Ab good. It yeah. was absolutely good. Yes. Th absolutely good. It's all about Billy's dad, Randall. He buys his son a mo Mogwai for Christmas. Yeah, it's like a... He got it from Chinatown, didn't he? Yes. From a yeah. wise old Chinaman. Yeah, named Mr. Wing, I'm, if I'm pronouncing his name. Because uh, Billy's dad's an inventor, and he goes around different businesses and he tries to like, sell his latest inven inventions, doesn't he? Yes. And then he, he hears a strange noise, and then he's introduced to the Mogwai. Gizmo, yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were three things that uh, that uh, the Peltzers need to do to take care of Gizmo. Oh, the three golden rules. Yes. Do not shine any bright lights. Yeah. Don't put water on it. And what happens if you put water on them? Multiply. Yeah. And do not feed them after midnight. Yeah. Mm. And then... That's when they turn into gremlins, isn't it? Yes. Because the mogwais get fed after midnight, after they've been multiplied, and then they turn into gremlins and take over the whole city. At one point, they destroy a cinema after briefly watching the Disney film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, <sighs> despite this film being Warner Brothers distributed. Can you remember that one that um, was put in the microwave and exploded? Oh, yeah, that was the sequel. And luckily, it did include... Oh, was it the second one? Yeah. 
Did you know Gremlins? Yeah, Gremlins had a sequel in 1990, but it wasn't focused on taking place at Christmas time. No, that was called The New Batch, wasn't it? Or A New Batch or something like that. Yeah. But yes, even though Snow White is not is not Disney, I mean, it's not Warner Brothers made, but Disney made, Gremlins 2 is able to get proper Warner Brothers animated characters, which are Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, and Daffy Duck to appear at the beginning and the end of Gremlins 2. Good facts, Danny. Yeah. Hey, but they are not they, but they are bad for a, uh, a cameo. <laughs> you said it, Doc. But seriously, this film is despicable. Do you know what? I wondered how long it was going to take you. <laughs> to drop any impressions. <laughs> excellent. Very excellent. Yeah. Good film, though. I loved that film as a kid. That's the worst I'll do. Yes. Yeah, the sequel is also good because it has got another good cast, like Sir Christopher Lee. He played the mad scientist. Ah, he's the, like, the lab guy, guy. isn't he? Yeah, yes, yeah. and one of the Gremlins, fun facts, folks. If you uh, watched the other Christmas specials on of Teen Meets World, I'll, I'll tell you anyway, the, the Gremlin who talks in a scientific voice, the, the brain one, oh, yeah. he is voiced by the great Tony Randall, you know, the guy who does the voice of Mr. Grimm from How the Toy Saved Christmas. Yeah, you told me that when we watched that. See, I would never have known that. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Good to know, though. Did, who directed this, did you say? Joe Dante, who was also the director of Speak of the Devil, Looney Tunes Back in Action. Ah, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, even though the Looney Tunes uh, is made by Warner Brothers and Snow White isn't, but Disney, we do get the Looney Tunes interacting with many Disney characters in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, with Bugs being with Mickey and uh, Daffy being with Donald. Some interesting stuff here, son. Yes. Then, next up, we have... The next Christmas film we're going to be talking about, which got released about last year, we're talking about the CGI film adaptation of A Christmas Carol called Scrooge A Christmas Carol. Yeah, uh, see, I only heard of this recently. Yeah. But, um, you brought it up, didn't you, when you were doing a bit of, um, bit of research and putting your notes together for, well, for this episode, I suppose. Yeah. Yes, this film, this film adaptation stars the, uh, the cast of Luke Evans, who voices Scrooge, yeah. and Olivia Colman, who voices the ghost of Christmas past. Hey, Danny, can I just interrupt you briefly? I want, I want... What? What's green? Green Christmas light. Bolt. Those rip. Hmm. I don't know. Mistletoe. <laughs> Mistletoe. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, this film was also directed by Stephen Donnelly. And there's a fun fact. This this film was made... Uh, it uh, got a musical score from the music composer who tragically passed away once the, uh, the CGI film was done. Yeah. When was this, did you say, last year? Yeah, in 2022. Not on for very long, though, was it? Yeah, it wasn't very that It's not long. like a full-length film, is it? Well, yeah, but it is a good film adaptation. And uh, I think it's better than the other CGI film that got released around Christmas time in 2022, and that's The Amazing Maurice starring Hugh Laurie and... Uh, also, David Tennant. Yeah. Hey, Danny, why did the Scarecrow get a big Christmas bonus? I don't know. Because he was outstanding in the field. <laughs> that one was a bit poor. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, but at least the Scarecrows always be outstanding here in the land of Oz. 
And, uh, you know, speaking of the Wizard of Oz, in Gremlins 2, when the, uh, when the Gremlins began to melt in the water, one of them does a reference to the Wicked Witch of the West cry out, I'm melting! <laughs> <laughs> so would you recommend? I think it's a... It's a very good uh, adaptation, but I mostly also like the other film adaptations of The Christmas Carol, like the one that has Jim Carrey as oh, Ebenezer Scrooge. I think that's probably my favourite, you know. Yes, the Robert Zemeckis adaptation. Yeah, yeah. I think we might have talked about that last year, didn't we? Yeah, maybe. Along with The Muppet's Christmas Carol, and, not to mention, Mickey's Christmas Carol, yeah. which stars Scrooge McDuck as... Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah. Yeah, so Scrooge as Scrooge makes a lot, <laughs> a lot bit more sense or even a good joke there, especially in the Disney franchise. Hey, Danny, do you know what happened to that man that stole the, uh, the advent calendar? I don't know. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> What's this then, Danny? What you got here? I see you well, shuffling your notes. Well, <laughs> this one. <laughs> well, usually at times TV specials at Christmas time were yeah. shown through stop motion and be released on Christmas Day. Yeah. With the likes of Santa Claus is Coming to Town that starred Mickey Rooney and featuring song featuring a song by Fred Astaire, along with Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Yeah. Well this one What is it, Sam? Um, give it to us. This one is made here in the UK, but it's not made by Ardman itself. It was but it was made by someone who works at Ardman called Richard Starzak. What is it? And that is, of course, the short TV special of Robbie the Reindeer. Ah, yeah. Yeah, you were watching this, um, you watched this for Lee not long ago. Yeah. Yes. So, that's made by someone who, who's done works on Ardman projects. And... Yeah, but wasn't made by Ardman itself. Yeah, yeah. Who distributed that then? Or who who what company made that? <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> but it was it did air on the BBC yeah. at Christmas time. And this one has got a good cast, such as Arden O'Hanlon, who does Robbie, the main character. It also stars Gene Horrocks as Donna, Steve Coogan as the main pro main antagonist, Blitzen. Yeah, I love Steve Coogan. Yeah, Alan Partridge himself. Carolyn Quinton plays Vixen. Then we also have the comedic duo of Harry Enfield and Paul Whitehouse voicing Prancer and Old Jingle, respectively. Yeah. Yes, not to mention Vicky Tomlinson of the Royal Family fame. The Royal Family fame voiced Santa Claus. I watched um, Royal Family a couple of days ago. You've got to watch one every year, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And an, a nice, splendid cameo from Seal voicing an animal counterpart of himself. <laughs> seal? It's seals, in it? Oh, yeah. Voicing a voicing an actual seal who sings crazy. You know, baby, baby, baby. Thank you, Seal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't believe they had to have a joke like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than all my jokes that I've just put down there. <laughs> I mean, yes. okay. <laughs> yeah, the synthesis is Robbie the Reindeer moved to the North Pole to follow in the footsteps of his dad, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer himself. He was willing to be the next in line to become Santa's trusty navigator. But then it's been revealed during Santa's annual Christmas party that Santa has got a sleigh mark too. Yeah. A fantastic 
more faster slay. Oh, that reminds me of a good joke there. What does Santa suffer from if he gets stuck in the chimney? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Claustrophobic. But anyway, <laughs> Santa, Santa has got a brand new sleigh that's more faster and speeder called the Sleigh Mark II. It's even got an ashtray that says, Don't smoke, you idiot. Right, Danny, if we're just going to fire in these jokes, I've got another one. What do you get when you cross a snowman with a vampire? Oh, that's easy, Dad. What? It's a frostbite. Oh! Name the joke, right? Okay. I suppose that's another one. Well, but anyway, get let's get to the plot. Robbie <laughs> is so upset about uh, this new invention that that's the new sleigh that Santa made, Sleigh Mark II. He thinks that his hopes and dreams of becoming the trusty navigator for Santa has been crushed. He decides to run away from the North Pole, but then he got frozen. And then, and then Santa's elves found him. And that's when uh, Robbie decides to do uh, something better by making toys. Unfortunately, he wasn't good at any. He began to make some mutant ones, like Sebastian Muscle Whale and his arch enemy Octo Monkey. Octo Monkey. Oh yeah, I will get you, Sebastian. <laughs> and but then Donna find, finds a uh, Robbie. Donna, one of Santa's reindeer, whom yes, Donna finds Robbie and tells tells him. That the only way that uh, that Robbie will become most fit to become Santi's navigator of leading the way to every house in the world to deliver those presents is to win the reindeer games. Yeah. So, what did you reckon to this then? Like, where do you rate it? I always ask you this, but is it something you'll watch again? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And this short. <laughs> it. This short, the first Robbie the Reindeer short that I mentioned was called Hooves of Fire, and then they made two more, such as Legend of the Lost Tribe and Close Encounters of the Herd Kind. <laughs> See, he's squeezing a joke there. Can I squeeze one in? All right. What do snowmen eat for their breakfast? I don't know. A lovely bowl of ice krispies. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't try that at all. Oh, oh, oh. Right then. What we're we moving on to? Since we talked about the Matt Groening stuff, like The Simpsons, I think it's time for a Christmas special featuring uh, The Simpsons. Yeah, and yeah. That's the very first ever episode of The Simpsons. Yeah. It's called Roasting on an Open Fire. Yeah, I remember this. Since the uh, since the Simpsons got its start as a segment on the Tracy Ullman show, it was then decided that the Simpsons got a Christmas special called Roasting on an Open Fire. It was a big success, and that's when the Simpsons uh, got its own TV series. Yeah. Oh, God, so what was this, the 1989? Late 80s? Early 90s? Well, yeah. Yes, the uh, a year after Who Framed Roger Rabbit came out to speak of the devil. Wow. And a year before Gremlins 2. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, it was. I've just been talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, the synthesis is Homer tries to get a Christmas bonus, but Mr. Burns said, There are no Christmas bonuses this year. So, Homer did something to try and get the Christmas bonus by working as a Santa at the mall. Or well, the yeah. shopping centres, like we have to call in the UK. Ah, oh, shopping mall. Yes. Yeah. But then, it still did not work. And that is, and that was when Homer decides to get better money by, uh, by getting a new pet dog. And that's where he found Santa's little helper. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, I forgot that's when, yeah, that's when they brought him in. Yes, that was during a dog raid. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And that's when... Uh, but he wasn't very good, was he? 
Yeah, not very good. But Homer was able to get Santa's little help as a pet. Yeah, because Bart and Lisa wanted to keep him. Yeah. And so it happened. Yeah. Well, we watched something recently, didn't we? But I know you watched the series, but you never you never watched the Christmas special, did you? The one of men behaving badly. Yeah, did you like that? Oh, yeah. That was the on the exact same years when Neil Morrissey, who played Toby, I mean Tony, in Men Paving Badly, started becoming the voice of Bob the Builder. Yeah, it would have been right about then, yeah. Yeah, that was the exact same year when Bob the Builder made its debut to television. Yeah. We've watched quite a few Christmas films, haven't we, so far? Yes. I, mean, I know what we were sort of midway through, but... We've watched Deck the Halls, Jingle All the Way, uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. For me, that's the best. Yes. That's my favourite. Not to mention uh, Die Hard. Oh, Die Hard, yeah. And yes, Home Alone 1 and 2, the best one with the original cast of Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, and Daniel Stern. Yeah. There's some quiz questions coming up. A reminder there. And I'm, I'm sure you've got some Home Alone questions in there, haven't you? Oh, yes. So you've done 10 quiz questions. So have we got any, other, uh, any others to talk about, or are you going straight to the quiz? Let's get to the quiz now. Ooh. Yeah. So bring it on with the questions. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone will get the answers right by putting in the, in the comments below. Yeah, put them in the comments. Yes, folks, do that. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. <laughs> Go on then, Danny, question number one. All right, then. Who raised Buddy the Elf at the North Pole? Remember, don't give the answer, Danny. Who raised Buddy the Elf in the movie Elf? By. That's easy, Bob Newhart. Will Ferrell. I mean, Will no. Ferrell, who plays a buddy. Yeah. But I know. But, but we're asking. <laughs> but who raised Buddy the Elf? It's, yeah, the one played by Bob Newhart. Right, okay. The actor's name. Yeah, character name. Yeah. Okay. Right. Question number two. Question number two. In the movie Elf, what's the best way to spread Christmas cheer? Ooh. Best way to spread Christmas cheer. Hmm. I've got this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Question number three. All right. Also in the movie Elf. Oh, another Elf question. What does Buddy eat in the doctor's office? What does Buddy eat in the doctor's office? What does he eat? Well, Ooh, I know. I know. Right then. Number four. This one's going to be a Grinch question this time. Ooh. What is the name of the Grinch's loyal dog? Grinch's loyal dog. Uh... Is it? Actually, you're not going to. Good questions, Danny. Yep. In Home Alone. What's the name of the two burglars? What's the name of the two burglars? Oh, yeah. All right. Which city does Ebenezer Scrooge live in in The Christmas Carol? Right, okay. And next, next question. And in Home Alone 2, what were ha the, the two burglars 
No Nas. What were the two burglars known as? My answer. Next, how many ghosts show up in the Christmas Carol? How many ghosts? Ha <laughs> How many ghosts show up in the Christmas Carol? There's my answer. Number nine. What is the name of the carrot that becomes the Christmas mascot for the Aldi adverts? The name of the carrot. That's right. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, this will be last question, won't it? Yes, the last qu question. In the Polar Express, which actor plays six different characters? Polar Express. Six different characters. Ah. I've done quite well there. Mm -hmm. Mm. Right, yeah. So, ten questions there. Ten Christmas questions. So, really, good. If you could put them in the comments. We'll see how well you do. Don't cheat though, come on. I didn't cheat. <laughs> Much. Yeah, as long as I try not to cheat myself, really. Oh, Danny, can I ask you a question? Yes, Dad, take it away. <laughs> uh, so this year, I know you might stick to the same or you might change, but what's what would you say is your favourite Christmas song? I wish it could be Christmas every day. You do love that, don't you? Yes, I do. Do you know which one I quite like? What? Because I can't get it out of my head. It's quite, it is jolly, isn't it? Um, Elton John and Ed Sheeran. Merry Christmas. Oh, yes. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> so, have you got any messages for anyone, Danny? Well, hmm, I'm not sure. Well, maybe I, Merry Christmas. Yes. Everyone, yeah. Have a nice Christmas. Yeah, so I think that's uh, all from our Christmas little Christmas special. Yeah, I thought we'd sneak one in. Yeah, just to celebrate the seasons of to be jolly. Ba la 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 la. Yeah, and I hope you, you enjoy um, the new tune that we've got on the beginning and the end of this episode. It's um, Bedsit Manor's little Christmas number, Force a Smile at Christmas. That's right. Yeah, so check them out. Yeah, check them out. Yeah, so Bedsit Manor. Yeah. John Joe, we love you. Yes, we love you and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New and Year. Happy New Year. A Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. You all know this. Ho, ho, ho.